Hey, welcome to The Child's View. I'm Sharon Brown. Our um, focus today is going to be about parent engagement and partnerships. I'm here with my colleagues, Becky Roth and Miss Bernadette Towns. So I hope you enjoy this segment. We're going to start off by just giving you just a little bit of, of research that is talking about the partnership that needs to be formed with parents and the educational system. No matter whether you are an infant program, you have your child in an infant daycare program, or you're in high school, that parent engagement is probably the most vital thing to a child's education that you can get. So if we look at a couple of the studies, the American Psychological Association actually did a study with 187 poverty families, because normally families that are, are impoverished, the children's educational level is just a little bit different, and it has to do with a lot of things. Maybe it's the um, time that they can give to the child, maybe it's the resources that they have, but they looked at that and they compared all of those 187 children and they followed them from birth to third grade. And it was astonishing the same economic, same social um, status, the children whose parents were engaged or they had adults in their lives who were engaged in their education mm. were far, far wow. ahead of the third graders Wow. Who had who who maybe came from professional families? The oh, wow. um, National Coalition of Parent Involvement in Education says there's actually some um, huge statistics: higher grades, um, better school regularity. They're, okay. they're in school more often, less absenteeism, better social skills, mm. and this has to do with parents having a positive aspect on, on education themselves. Mm -hmm. um, the National PTA Association also says the same things. Says that engagement in that, um, that, that um, partnership that's, that's formed has a direct, it's, there's a direct predictor yeah. on where those children are going to be when they've graduated high school and then gone on to college. And it had nothing to do with the socioeconomic status of the children. Wow. It all was the engagement, which I think is, is fabulous. Yes. Right? Well, especially when you talk about families of poverty. I mean, yeah. you usually see that they struggle a lot more mm -hmm. in academics, yeah. but but when parents are in the classroom or engage with the teacher, yes. it sends a message, this is important. Yeah. It's, yes, uh, I yeah. value it, and, I value and you. So, you know, some people can't, they, they don't know how to be engaged. Mm. <clears throat> In, the, in their schools or with their children. And so be, be at school um, as much as you can. Now, some people yeah. can't. Right. Um, I right. was a working parent, yeah. mm -hmm. so it's really hard. So, but that's, that's the, the smallest aspect of this. Right. If we really look at it, it's your um, attitude towards education. Mm -hmm. right. And if that parent is positive, the children have a, a positive, more positive outlook mm -hmm. on what they're doing. Um, engaging with them. There's <clears throat> there's another study and it and it has to do with it it really isn't a partnership actually, but it's the engagement and and how children look at their parents. Mm. And um, I hope everybody watches it. And it is um, I was in Georgia and actually got a chance to see uh, Dr. Barbara Fitzgerald talk and she was mm. talking about the still face experiment. And I think oh. you guys can all look it up and you, yes. you haven't seen it, yeah. but it has to do with engagement yeah. and it starts with an infant. Yes. Holy cow. Yes. I don't know if you've seen it. Yes. It's, it's amazing to watch. Yeah. 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 So it, really hard to watch too. It's really hard, hard to watch. It's hard to watch. Yeah. yeah. That engagement yeah. Yes. Right. starts at infancy and then the involvement continues. Right. It continues. Right. And if right. they're, Having that partnership, I mean, you talked about it with guiding behaviors. Right. We've talked about it with difficult behaviors. Right. It is imperative that those parents Well, are and you know, I talked involved. about in another segment, uh, Mindsight with Dan yes. Siegel. And he talks about the research done on mirror neurons and <sighs> that mirror neurons are the one of the main reasons that when, you know, a parent sneezes or a parent looks away, that the baby will go to that direction or move mm -hmm. to that spot or because what happens is in their brain that that area that the parent is using to do whatever it is they're doing it's usually a specific task lights up 
Mm. So, um, you know, we're designed that way. Mm -hmm. And so if they see that their parent is in the classroom or involved, so it, like you said, it doesn't only start at birth, but it continues through a lifetime that we're looking to this parent um, as a guide to what I should be doing, how I should be living, what's important in life. Yeah. So um, it's very basic. And right? just think I mean, how it's many part times of we've like called our parents in our adulthood yeah. and said, you know, hey, mom, you know, I'm going through right. this. Or I'm about to make this big decision with my right. job. Or, and you still need that parent engagement. And so, right. and so right. I know that as a teacher myself, um, especially an early education teacher, I didn't always have parents that mm. that could or would or wanted mm -hmm. to help. And so there was lots of things that if they wanted to help, but they couldn't because of of situations like, you know, they're busy, they're working. Right. And that's why I had their preschoolers. Yeah. Um, give them things that help them be connected. Yes. The teacher doing things like newsletters, yes. doing things yes. like notes home, doing things like calls, yeah. calling right. home. Um, the parents, giving, giving the parents tasks, would you mind um, doing this for me, sorting this or doing yeah. this, prepping right. this for me. I found that most parents that couldn't come into the classroom to work would do that and they and they started having a different mindset almost mm. of the preschool experience because mm -hmm. sometimes the preschool experience isn't the right. important thing. Right. It's here, we have your, your child so you can go to work. Well, mm -hmm. we want to get them used right. to being a partner yes at that age because then it'll continue right it'll it's continue so important when i taught uh third and fourth grade i had um migrant bilingual parents and they were very standoffish about coming to the classroom because many of them were second language learners and so they didn't really feel comfortable or they felt like they couldn't help in right. the classroom right and so what i started doing is um sending home things that they could cut out mm -hmm. for me um and then they'd bring it back and they were happy to do it they just did, felt like i can't be in the class you're right. a teacher and that was a cultural thing too and there are right. cultural perspectives mm -hmm. that you know not I'm not, I'm, yeah. yeah this is a teacher i have to esteem this person right, 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 in, so right. i can't do what they do but um, I was able to draw them in that way. And also I made it a point to call my um, parents of good children, not only the ones that I was having difficulty with. Yes. And so I'd give them, hey, I just want you to know your child did awesome today. And that would draw them in too because they felt like I was approachable right. and then they, was, they were more willing to be a partner with me because I've talked to them on the phone, I've told them how well they're, being, uh, they're doing as a parent, how well their child is doing. Right. And that actually was a strategy to kind of help open them up and bring them in to become right. a partner. Is that right. open communication you know, I, I tell my college students all the time, um, and I used to tell my staff this as well when I was a director, that we need to put a triangle up and the child has to be at the top. And the, the teacher, no matter what age group it is, whether it's that infant teacher or that high school teacher, mm -hmm. or in some cases, that college student who's still mm -hmm. a young college student, mm -hmm. and the parents. And there needs to be arrows going up to the child, mm -hmm. but arrows going across the bottom both ways. Right. That has to be an open avenue. Mm. The parents need to be involved. I know that they don't always think they can. Maybe they don't right. feel like comfortable in the classroom, right. intimidated by the teacher, yes. but if they'll get involved, they will see their children being far more successful. Yes. And that's what we really want. Yes. The bottom line is what's best for the child. Yes, I yeah. agree. That's such a good point. Well, and I think with with technology, there's lots of apps and things and ways to get parents connected. I'm not sure how I feel about them. I think it would, it's still better to, you know, be face to face, try to draw them into the classroom. Right. But the reality is yes. that you might be able to connect with parents right. that way that you aren't able yes. in other ways. You know, but I had a, a, a difficult child many years ago, and um, you know, I'd had to call home because when there's an incident, you yeah, you, you gotta have tell, to them. tell them. Right. Yeah. And so I called him one day and and. It was the dad that answered, and he said, what did he do now? And I thought to myself, yeah, okay, this is the time We're that I need to change it. this. Yeah. So I said, well, you know what he did? He did this, and he cleaned up that, and he did this, and I'm so proud of him. Thank you for letting me have him. Mm. And it changed the mindset yes. of the parents because it's like, oh, she can see some good in my child. It's yes. not always bad. So again, that focus on the child, but that open communication. Mm -hmm. Parents can do a lot if 
their attitude towards education is big. Right, right. right. So. Well, and as a teacher, it's mm -hmm. important not to always be pointing out the challenging behaviors, right. if you will. You yeah. know, looking at the good, absolutely, because yeah. Sometimes, a lot of times I've found parents follow suit, so they will find the same issues with mm -hmm. their children. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, parents need support too. And yes, they do. Yeah, they do. Yes, so, they do. Um, yes, they do. We need to be the model. And, and that really applies to a lot of our segments, you yeah. know, whether it's mindfulness or whether right. it's challenging behaviors or whether it's, you know, modeling in the classroom. But it's, we also have and to remember where to, the model I used to um, refer to my children as energetic, enthusiastic learners. When they, <laughs> yeah. when they would have those behaviors and it changes it changes it, changes it. it. Yes. from a negative yes. to a positive right yeah. so, right and in yeah, our heads right. too right like yeah. that's one of the reasons that we took thomas and chess's temperament styles right right um, from easy difficult and slow to warm to, to flexible fearful and feisty, feisty because feisty is a very different word than yeah. difficult yes. <laughs> right? yes yeah i mean feisty you're like okay this could be fun and difficult yeah. you're like oh I don't, I don't i don't think so yeah. difficult yeah negative connotation so even changing our own like, language yeah. helps yeah. change our own thought processes and so, many times the way we approach it yeah so. so we want to leave you with the message of being engaged yes open communication good attitude and just enjoy your children thank you for watching the child's view i hope you tune in next time Bye.